Good day, everyone. Welcome to the next Redfish School training session. I am John Mayfield from Hewlett Packard Enterprise, and today we will go over the fabrics model in Redfish. This is the first session of a three part series on the fabrics model. This session is an introduction to the fabrics model. We will next discuss fabric routing and configuration in a separate session. And finally, example fabric models as a third session in the series. In today's session, we will show an overview of the fabrics model in Redfish. Then we will go over the different representations of fabrics and their resources in the fabrics model, specifically connectivity of a fabric, endpoints, switches, and ports, fabric adapters, and how fabric metrics are represented. Today's data center connect many servers to needed resources or other servers within that data center. Some require connecting groups of servers and resources to support specific workloads. High-speed fabrics provide the connectivity between the server nodes and required components for those workloads. The Redfish fabric model incorporates fabric infrastructure components to manage and describe these interconnect fabrics and the constraints within that fabric. The fabric model describes the connectivity of these cluster resources as switches, ports, routers, and endpoints. Resources are connected to the fabric with fabric adapters or network adapters. The fabric model also describes connectivity, constraints, and isolation on the fabric with zones, address pools, and connections. Fabrics connect resources together across a shared medium, providing connectivity to all the resources using a set of protocols. These resources are connected physically using switches, routers, and ports that connect the resources to the fabric. This bubble diagram on the right depicts the components of the fabric model. A fabric has switches, endpoints, zones, and address pools. Switches are connected to endpoints via ports. Endpoints represent the components of the fabric. Zones and address pools represent constraints. So switches compose the fabric and endpoints represent the shareable physical resources connected to that fabric. The fabric is organized at a topology provided by the switches and endpoints and how they are connected. The fabric model represents a single fabric of a specific technology like Ethernet, SAS, or CXL. However, a service route could have multiple fabric models for different fabric types. As the fabric model is hierarchically organized in Redfish from the service route. Resources are connected to the fabric via fabric adapters or network adapters. Adapters connect to a switch via a port on the adapter. Switches can connect to endpoints or to other switches. Endpoints describe the resource and its connectivity to that fabric. As an example, is the resource a target, an initiator, or both? Endpoints also described an identifier for that resources on the fabric, the communication protocol, and links to the connected entities and constraints for that specific endpoint. Ports describe the capabilities and configuration of a fabric component's port. This could include the transmission protocol, port speed, width, identifier of the port on the fabric, and some possible features or functions of that port, like LLDP or LLACP or auto negotiation. Ports can collect metrics that indicate operation health of the component of the fabric. Some example metrics are I.O. statistics and or errors encountered by the port. Fabric and network adapters express endpoint physical connectivity with port resources. These adapters are specific to a fabric type. They describe their capabilities and configuration, like route tables, embedded switch configuration, virtual channels, or traffic classes. This brings us to the end of the fabrics introduction video. Thank you for watching today. 
For more information, you can visit the DMTF website at dmtf.org, or you can visit the Redfish Developer Hub at redfish.dmtf.org.